right, folks, welcome. It's uh, Demo Day at Matrix Towers. We have a wonderful lineup here today. We're going to talk about the new auth flow in mobile. We're going to talk about sliding seek in Element X iOS. That is real life, it's not just sci fi. Eric is going to talk about Matrix Public Archive, which might not be on your radar, but it probably should be. Robin is going to talk about embedding Element Core into Element Web. And Bruno, last minute, almost to last minute, because we were already uh, just about to start the demos, um, came up with runtime theming on hydrogen. So, take us away, Team Delight. Oh, it's not Team Delight, is it? It's not Team Delight. It is Team FTUE, between okay. the four of us. Um, Doug's going to share his screen. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Amsha, Adam, myself, and Doug will talk you through. Uh, this is very exciting. Um, we have been working on this for a little while. Um, we're looking at improving our onboarding experience for all users. Um, we're looking at doing this across all platforms. Today, we're going to be talking about the mobile improvements that are coming to you very soon. Um, so before we jump into the demo, we will talk about how we landed there. I'm sure. OK, so we did some uh, user testing on moderated to begin with. We knew some of the problems that existed already. But uh, just to be sure, we tested it with completely new audiences as well. Uh, on Android, it is no secret. It takes five steps to actually create your account to even get into sign to log in um, or sign up as well or to create your account. So that was five steps too many. Uh, along with that, we basically assume that we know what our home server is. Uh, we were confusing users with too many options up front. And similarly, SSO was five steps away as well. And it just lacked the UI polish that it needed. Um, on iOS, on iOS, uh, there was a slightly different story. The the UI polish was also needed over here, but um, we were not explaining home server at all on iOS. And along with that, the value proposition of the app wasn't very clear to new users, probably because we were tucking away a lot of the complexity out of the app. So Android was too complex, and iOS was too simple. Um, so those were the problems. Next screen. But more importantly, both the apps were performing differently. The experience was completely different. And both of those experiences were different from web as well. Next screen. Uh, the biggest takeaway that we had from first time users was that it lacked personality and it seemed very business oriented. So we wanted to reduce the complexity and take some cues from the new website redesign that we had. Uh, we use gradients over here and use snappy copy. So we wanted to take some of that personality in the apps, basically, and make a good first impression. Now, Doug is going to talk about create an account flow. Doug, we cannot hear you, Doug. You're muted, Doug. You got me now? Yeah. Okay, so um, the flows that we landed on um, have now got um, a consistent, they're consistent at both, across both of the platforms. Um, we've got um, a central create account screen that's the start of the flow, and it lets you choose um, to authenticate with username and password. It lets you do your SSO authentication, um, or if necessary, we can show fallback fl uh, flows. Um, there, you can also, you can also, from here, choose to select um, a server, um, meaning that you don't end up going down a slightly dead end if you suddenly realize you've got to the wrong point and you don't have to back up again. So it's all from that one screen. Um, the flow supports the same stages that we did before. We've got email, phone number, recapture, and terms of service. Um, and we had um, a rewrite on iOS um, to update the interactive authentication handling so that it aligned with um, Android um, and how it's handled there on the SDK. Um, once you've completed your registration, um, you've now then got the opportunity to personalize your profile. So you can add a display name and an avatar ready for when you're um, when you start your first conversations. Um, so that's the create account flow, and then over to Adam for sign in. Hello. Um, so sign in is a very similar story to account creation. Um, we're actually using very familiar patterns. It shouldn't look too different. Um, one of the big takeaways here is that 
there isn't multiple entry points anymore. You can get straight into signing in, uh, which is quite important. For example, if you've forgotten your password um, in the past on the previous flow, uh, this was hidden away on only the matrix.org flow. So if you were signing into a, to your own custom home server, it was almost impossible to find how to reset your password. Um, um. So now that's much simpler. Um, something else that we've also done, which is which is consistent on both account creation and sign in, is you can now sign in um, or create an account um, with a full matrix ID. If you if you know it up front, you can just type it straight in, um, and that will dynamically switch over the selected home server. Uh, yep. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, speaking of the forgot password flow, um, we've actually changed the way that the ordering happens. Um, it's actually a lot more traditional now. Um, in the previous flow, we would ask for, um, for you to confirm your email and provide a new password at the same time, whereas now we actually let you um, choose the right email address um, and then change your password um, once you've actually verified it on the correct account. Um, something that's also new is that we've followed um, on with uh, web, um, and now you can actually opt out of signing out of all devices. Uh, the previous behavior was to sign out of everything if you were to reset your password. Um, and it's probably worth mentioning as well, from a technical perspective, um, the new first-time user experience is a heavily feature-flagged flow, um, and because it is such a critical path, there's been a heavy, um, uh, there's been a, a lot of, uh, of, of emphasis on writing unit tests in this area. So um, this feature, for example, is at seventy-five percent. So it, it's, it's quite well covered. Um, that's it from my side. So what's next? Uh, as Adam mentioned, this is a very uh, high risk part of the flow for us. So we'll be launching, yay! It's a soft launch slightly. We're going to do a phased rollout. So uh, when the apps go on the app store next week, a certain percent of users will have access to this and we'll increase that percentage over time. So it's a big bang, but only a little bang. Um, as we do that, we'll be monitoring the analytics and any feedback. So throw those in the channel if you are experiencing something and if you love it, definitely put it in the channel and let us know. Um, and that's kind of it on mobile. As we mentioned at the beginning, we are looking at also bringing some of our learnings into web and just getting smarter over time so that we can personalize users' experience, really make it uh, special and relevant to you when you sign in. That's going to start on web, so look out for those updates. And that's it. That's great. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Um, now, Stefan unfortunately can't be with us. Um, so he has left a video, which I am now going to attempt to play to you. Hello, everybody. Ben from the Rust team has been doing a lot of work recently to get sliding sync support into the Matrix Rust SDK. And today I'm going to show you how that looks when integrated into the ElementX iOS client. The way this works is that the Rust SDK exposes a simple API to us to configure sliding sync. In this particular case, because we're building the home screen, we're going to create a particular view for it called home screen. We're going to sort it by recency. We're going to tell it that it's going to be bashed up in, in fetches of 20 rooms. And then we're going to tell it that we want it to go ahead and fetch all the rooms for us so that we have a full list at the end of it. Once that's done, we can, we can configure the actual sliding sync with a proxy to the sliding sync instance, and then, and then add that view to it so that it gets updated as, as events come in. On the view model side, we will take that room and we're going to register as a delegate to it so that every time there's updates on the rooms, we can go ahead and, and update our room list in the UI. When you run it, this looks a little bit like this. This will be a very first login for me with my real account on 160 rooms. And please pay attention to how fast it actually loads the initial set of rooms. So sliding sync, I will log in and then sliding sync will start. And it's going to fetch my first 20 rooms. And if you look at the logs, it's going to continue fetching rooms in batches by 20 until it actually finishes the whole list. As you notice, that was almost instant. And that's exactly what we want. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, now, because I told the view that I want it to be sorted by recency, it means that if I go and I update any of the rooms I'm in, like in this particular case, my encrypted test room, we will see that room just move to the top as you expect it to. Now, there's a lot of work to be done in regards to the last message we display here, the unread counts, the avatars, and other things like that. But for all intents and purposes, this is a very, very promising proof of concept, and we can go ahead and build really, really nice things on top of it. And I guess that's it. It's, it's as simple as that. Thank you for your time. Uh, Eric, are you out there? Eric Eastwood. I am here. Start sharing my screen. 
Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay, so today I'm showing off the Matrix Public Archive. As the name suggests, it's an archive of history for your Matrix world readable rooms. So you can go day by day or pop back a year ago and see what your room was up to. But more importantly, it also allows Google to do the same thing and see all of your content that happened in your room on that day. So you'll probably start finding matrix content from your favorite search engine. And for example, if someone asks a question in your matrix room, and then in the future, they ask the same question on Google, they'll be able to find the same answer in the matrix room. And this also aligns with our Gitter feature parity work because we had an archive with the same goals in mind on, on that side of things, this brings it to the matrix ecosystem. Uh, under the hood, we're using MSC 3030, the timestamp to event endpoint, and that basically allows us to get all the messages on each given day. And then we server side render that with hydrogen. So reusing hydrogen allows us to get pretty and native to element looking styles and keeps the maintenance burden of all these different event types in hydrogen itself. And for example, new event types like polls, when hydrogen supports that, we'll be able to support polls in the archive easily. Just update the dependency. Um, if you try this out yourself and run this against a real server and a big room, you might run into some timeout issues. But even when it times out, the archive will tell you what was slow. So we have some tracing involved here, but it says what to make your request happened on the back end that ate all the time up. So right now we're seeing slash messages take a lot of time. Currently, this is a big data dump. And if you don't know the matrix API, this kind of means nothing, but hopefully we can turn this into a nice performance bar at the top. So it's way more understandable, but at least the information is available right now. Slash messages is being slow. And I'm doing some investigation in Synapse right now around how to make that faster because we can't just throw a cache up in front of something that's slow to begin with. We want this to load on the first try every time. If you want to follow what's going on, go check out Matrix Public Archive on Matrix.org on GitHub. And then hopefully next time I can also show off a room directory landing page so you can discover all the rooms available in the archive. Jordan Connor from the design team is working on that. And then we'll probably also have a public canonical instance posted somewhere so everyone can try it out at that point as well. Very cool. Nicely uh, shared screen. <laughs> I'm assuming that Neil has subsequently got his screen sharing sorted out whilst we were doing that. Right? No, I actually, I actually have. Oh, God. Okay, next question. Next. next question. <laughs> right, Robin. Right, so that would be me. Uh, yes, I am. Um, right, so as you may know, Element Call is the application that we're using to uh, deliver uh, next gen VoIP experiences um, natively with Matrix technology. And um, currently, it only exists as a standalone application that you access via your browser. But we'd really like to be able to um, access Element Call from within the other Element apps so that we can offer um, more integrated experiences like video rooms with Element Call um, and one-to-one uh, -one calls and others as well. So what I've been working on, which I'll share now, um, for the past few weeks there we go, is um, making element call so that it can work within element web in the form of a widget. So I'm here in this element tab. And if I go to this particular room, we should be instantly teleported into a um, element call, uh, group call, as you can see here. And this is, of course, using MSC 341 under the hood to do group calls rather than just the uh, native one-to-one -one calls that we used to only have. Um, and so this is running inside a widget um, using the widget API to basically perform all of the requests element needs from within this client. Um, and so it looks somewhat straightforward, but there's a lot of things going on under the hood to make it so that this element call client isn't just separated off into a um, separate room, um, but in fact, it is actually sending all of the events uh, needed to coordinate this call within this room itself. And we're doing that by basically using the widget API as a sort of um, pseudo client server API 
so that um, Element Call is able to use these endpoints of the widget API to um, basically mock what would be a full matrix client. And so you can see here um, all of the call member events that signal when you've joined are coming through um, natively within the room. And this will be um, currently just running in a custom widget, but um, later it will be um, available in a more user-friendly way where you can just start a video room with one of these element call widgets. And yeah, that's about it. Bruno, you're up. Yes. Um, last demo. I won't take up too much of your time. Just sharing my screen. Um, <laughs> hello, Neil. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> can everybody see my screen? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Midun has been working on uh, runtime themes in Hydrogen, which is going to be very useful for uh, customizations uh, for custom deployments, uh, where you can add, modify the, the colors of one of the built in themes of Hydrogen. Um, by just adding a JSON file and putting that link in your config file. So in your config file, you would add the URL to theme manifests, and then you write a JSON file, a bit like this, where you uh, extend the theme here from element, and then you can add variants with different colors. And these colors are the input for all kinds of uh, yeah, coloring that goes on in the app. Uh, we can have derived colors, we can color our icons. And in practice, if you then load the app with this config change, it looks like this. So the themes appear in the theme chooser. Um, this is just some testing themes that Midun made for uh, testing his code, um, which uh, I didn't tell I was going to demo. So um, um, you can see that these themes, um, they just load like that. Um, and this is just for the JSON file. So um, very easy to do custom themes like this. Um, that's the demo. Ooh. That's it, right? Yep, yep, that's it, that's it. I was thinking about a gag because I have actually fixed it. I genuinely have just fixed it. <laughs> I was going to demo that I can actually do this. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think we need to, it's late, it's late. You're just going to have to believe me. Um, so anyway, that's the end of that. Matrix Live, um, thanks for sticking with us. See you soon. Bye. 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 Have a great weekend.